everyone, National Master Jesse Cohen here for Some School of Chess with another Quick Bites video for you. Today I want to talk to you about three crazy sacrificial openings. The kind of openings that are going to take everything to the limit. Now, I'm going to warn you before I show you these that if you choose to play them, you have to use a ton of energy, okay? There is no defensive play. You have got to be willing to throw everything at your opponent until you either checkmate them or win a decisive amount of material back. Let's jump right in. The first one that I want to show you today is actually a line that I haven't seen popular in quite some time. It's called the Perengi Gambit and it comes right out of the Sicilian. Check this out. E4, C5. This comes right out of a knight or. And now bishop e3. You don't see this as much. Usually bishop g5 is a lot more common these days. Um, people started playing knight g4 after Gary Kasparov, and it kind of turned people off from that. e6, cutting the bishop off, allows for g4. And then black sees that by playing here, there's a double attack here and here. So knight f5, g6, g5. Countering Black's threat with the threat of our own. G takes f5. E takes f5. Beautiful, beautiful move. This is the way. Right here. Okay? And if Black chooses to now save the knight with something like knight 2, d7, Black, or White simply plays the powerful queen h5. And I assure you that in combination with bishop c4 ideas, pawn to g6 ideas, castle's queenside ideas, Black is going to quickly find that all of white's pieces are ready to tear black's king apart and pretty much nothing that black possesses is ready to do anything at all. Instead, black is advised to strike back in the center, giving back the knight and immediately forking white's knight and bishop on e3 and c3. We ignore this by playing bishop c4. If black gets greedy at this point and takes either of these pieces, we play bishop takes f7 check, deflecting black's king off the defense of that queen. That'd be a huge mistake. Instead, black plays queen c7, unpinning the queen and threatening the bishop on c4. Queen d4 guards the uh, bishop, gets ready to castle, takes the bishop, castles queen side, takes on f2. I know this seems really, really greedy, but actually control of these two squares is actually important to help these rooks from going there to help uh, this attack against black's king. Bishop takes f7 check. It does not stop. Black has to take with the king. If queen takes f7, queen d8 is mate. King takes f7, queen d5 check. King takes f6, knight e4 check. Trust me, this is just suicide. If, if king takes f5, rook hf1, and I promise you, despite the enormous uh, deficit in material, uh, black cannot survive this. So black is actually best advised to go back, check, only move, check, if takes again, this is still mate, king, e7, and then a very clever move, queen back to d2, simply threatening to come over here or maybe to come over here. And it's amazing, uh, white is down six points, six, and yet look at black's position. Just so you have the, inf the full variation, it goes like this, check, here, 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 don't know if you saw this, but white actually allows this to happen. Check. We are happy if the queen sacks herself. We'll just take, well, actually, hold on a second. Let me, do not quote me on that one moment. We play, hold on, I actually want to make sure I get this right. If takes, yeah, we play knight d6. We don't play h, uh, queen takes h and queen f4 check, like, you know, desperately trading off that queen. That'd be horrendous. And so we play knight d6 check, and that attack continues. Okay, just want to make sure on that. Um, king e8, and now rook d8 check. Forcing, queen takes rook, queen takes here, queen e7. And this is the position you have to work with. And white is down an astounding eight points, and yet has nothing developed. And I promise you that white at least has a draw here. Um, sometimes white plays knight f6, d5. Listen, you might get this position, you might not, but this has been tested at the highest level of grandmasters, and you can get some wild, wild attacks. Okay, let's move on. 
Next on the line, we have the Traxler, okay? The Traxler is a very crazy opening, especially against all of our friends who love playing the fried liver attack. Let's jump into this. So for those who don't know, the fried liver attack comes after the two knights variation of the Italian. That's when black decides to play knight f6 against the Italian instead of bishop c5. This blocks the queen from g5 and allows knight g5 with the immediate threat in f7. The main variation is to simply block this, but the Traxler says, go ahead and have it. Now here, black's gonna, or white's going to go ahead and take it. Bishop takes f2, check. This is where chess gets insane. It's actually best for white not to take this bishop, but let's go ahead and see what happens if he does. Knight takes e4, check. If king e1, queen h4, check. And actually, this is funny. This happened literally in one of my classes today. Pawn to g3. Knight takes g3, and after h takes g3, queen takes g1 check, king e2. Um, well, if this is played, this is queen e4 check. This is really, really bad. In that game, it went bishop to f7, and king takes f7, and this position is just horrible. Black is now up four points. It's all reversed. It's just a nightmare. If white plays king g1 in this position, instead there follows queen h4 threatening the mate on f2, g3 trying to stop it. Knight takes g3. It's actually best that white not take the knight. Or sorry, sorry, take the knight. No, sorry, wait, no. Yeah, take the rook. Then knight d4. This is super crushing move. You have to understand the purpose of this move. Here's what black wants to do. Black wants to play knight e4 threatening queen f2 mate, which is actually kind of hard to stop. But white still has queen e2 and queen f3. Knight d4 takes that away. And after pawn to c3, knight to e4, uh, white can basically resign. Um, there's just no stopping these. Like, white can try to delay things, but white's in some huge trouble here. So instead of all that, white is best to not take the bishop. And here's what happens anyway. We save our queen. They eat our rook. D5. In all of these openings, you're going to notice that we don't take time hardly to defend anything. We are just chugging ahead bringing out pieces as fast as we can, and we are, like, attacking left and right. We don't care. E takes d5, knight d4. This is still hanging. Pawn c3. Bishop g4. Saving the queen with check. Knight back to d7. Sacking this bishop anyway. King takes bishop. Queen h4, check. King f1. Castles queenside. And this is one of the most awesome positions I've seen. White is up nine points, and all black wants to do is play this little rook f8 check, and everything is hanging, and white's king is just sitting out there completely barren and about to totally get checkmated. And there's really nothing that white can do about this. A beautiful, like, this is like mainline stuff, right? All right? Last opening we have today is the double Muzio Gambit, and anyone who is a fan of Eric Rosen the way that I am has seen this on his channel as well. This comes out of the King's Gambit. E4, E5, F4, E takes F4, Knight F3, G5, uh, Bishop C4, G4. Black starts attacking that uh, knight right away. We say, go ahead and have it. They take here, we take back. Now, the point of all this, and the reason we don't care, is that even though we're sacrificing, we have these three very active pieces, and they all are focused on that point. All we want is this pawn to disappear and to crash through here. Black senses this, brings out the queen. E5. We need to distract that queen for a second. Yum, yum, yum. Bishop takes f7 check. Double Muzio. There goes the second bishop. King takes. Now we're in the hole for six points, but now that king can't castle. And remember, friends, when you're in positions like this, you cannot stop throwing things. You cannot back off. If you back off, you will fail. You have to keep... It would be better that you go down swinging hard than being like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work, and then like playing some defensive chess. You can't. D4, sacrificing more. Queen takes. Bishop E3. Quick development with threats on the queen. No, this bishop actually can't be taken this time. Queen takes, and there's a really unfortunate pin there for black. So instead, the queen goes back. Knight c3, and now this is basically like the end of the Muzio, okay? Black has a ton of material, seven points, but has no development. White's about to take back here. Notice, of course, that this bishop is taken. There's queen h5 check, and that queen is going to be lost because of the pin. And you can, like, 
try to put these in computers. Try, and you'll see how crazy these openings are and just how far computers really do have to come when it comes to understanding chess. These positions are wild and crazy, and the evaluation bar goes like crazy. And yeah, even computers don't know, know what's going on. So um, you can use these in blitz. Um, you know, be a lot more cautious if you use these actually like in a serious over the board game, but you might even pull that off there. But uh, yeah, just remember, number one rule when it comes to all this is aggression. You need to use as many pieces as fast as you can to throw at your opponent and keep being aggressive, keep the threats coming. If you back off, you will lose. Unless you've like already succeeded in that attack and won a queen or something, and now you're up in points, maybe then you can kind of chill out a little bit. But really, like you go down swinging hard in every one of these. You don't back off, all right? So use these, tear people's faces off, and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you want. You know, I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the follows on Twitch, on YouTube. Um, yeah, I will be back next time. This is Summer School of Chess. This is Jesse Cohen, National Master. I will see you next time. Bye for now.